Uh, so here we are inside Substance Designer. Let's just go through the interface first. Uh, we can just start by making a new empty substance. So this is the Explorer window. Here you have your different graphs. And this is the graph window where where you have all your nodes that you work with. And these nodes uh, show up in the 3D view and 2D view. Uh, let's actually load up something here uh, so we can see what the different views are doing. So here we are, we have a graph load. So this is some kind of uh, mosaic material I made a while back. Uh, we can grab this node and say view view in 3D view. There. So now we see all the materials here. Uh, so the 2D view, whatever you double click on here, if I could double click on this, I preview this node. If I double click on this, this is the node I see. And so forth. I can go through all these nodes. You can hit space bar here to see how this uh, node repeats. So you see it's cutting off the edge here. If I hit space, you see the red uh, square here indicates where our main zero to one space is. So this is good for debugging. Uh, we have this uh, 3D view here. You can hold Control Shift on the keyboard to rotate the light. You have um, different ge uh, pieces of geometry here that you can preview on. Typically, I use the cylinder or the cube. Uh, the cube has, uh, you know, some tiling issues here where it can't wrap around. But you have your ball here as well. You have this is the uh, painter ball. You have the sphere here. If we go through here. We can enable tessellation. Uh, default is it's set to parallax occlusion, but if you go in here and enable tessellation, and then you hit this edit button here, you can enable this uh, scale parameter. You enable the scale, and you can see here it's pretty touchy based on the, your material. Uh, you can also enable higher levels of tessellation here so it's based on your what sort of your graphics card can handle so we'll set it to something maybe like 24 get a little more detail like so and what else lights i don't ever use that uh, camera you have some camera settings here you hit edit uh, I usually use uh, order graphic, but you can do perspective on here. You can also enable some post effects here, uh, where you have like lens flare settings and that type of deal. Uh, you can enable sort of some contrast here, not to make a nice, nicer render if you're not rendering in some other software. Uh, environment, you can toggle the background uh, environment on or off. And render, you can switch to iRay, which is a, a ray tracer. And now you see that our tessellation here doesn't match what we set up. It's because iRay is using some other type of tessellation, so you have to go into edit here and enable subdivision and set this one to something like this. And then we might need to go back into our sort of height here. To set it to something better. And you see these kind of like interesting highlights here. 
there in the camera settings. Go back in here and you can change the type. You have bloom here, which is more sort of conservative shape. Lens flare, you can see that creates this little lens effect. And you have these kind of quality settings you can mess with. I think that is the 3D view. Uh, oh yeah, you can also load your custom mesh in here. Uh, typically I use FBX, so it's, it's drag and drop it into this viewport window. And then you go and say view and 3D view as well. And what else? We have the library view here. So we have all our different nodes type. You can drag and drop them in here. Uh, they're categorized. Go through these and test them out. Uh, you have uh, different environments. So we can drag and drop the different uh, environment maps in here. Uh, if we go here to sort of enable it, you'll see that since I'm now an autographic camera here, uh, it looks a bit weird. But if I go to perspective, you can see. And we can go back here to camera and disable our post effects. So now if I drag and drop these different maps, you'll see them in here. That's pretty useful. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing more here. Basically, this view here is just uh, exp uh, the where you keep your different graphs. So I could have, I can copy this for instance and paste it in here and we can have a different version of this graph where, you know, we have different color tiles, for instance. Uh, anytime you want to make a permutation, just like create a new graph. So if you in 3D view, this guy should show up. Uh, what else? Yeah. Preferences. Typically, I never change anything in here. Uh, I do have some keyboard shortcuts uh, that I've set up for comments and frames, but by default, there's nothing in here. Uh, don't really use these either. You can uh, eye ray. You see down here, it has iteration, so it keeps improving the render and passes. So if you have a really heavy, you know, geometry scene in here with uh, lots of high resolution maps and that kind of stuff, you, you might want to, you know, uh, go up here and say suspend engine or cancel rendering. Cancel rendering will stop rendering in here and suspend engine will stop your graph from constantly updating if you put you know new nodes in here for instance uh, nothing really we need to cover here and that's just to help mm, just a couple of more things i, I want to mention about the interface we forgot to talk about the properties window so if i select any node its properties show up here and these are the common parameters all nodes share this first section and the specific parameters is you know for this blend node you can say which uh, which blend modes and some other settings down here and finally with interface you can just shift click and drag and move these windows around you can detach them as well so they're free floating i typically keep uh, this library view off and this most uh, this uh, explorer window i keep on my second screen just to have more uh, screen real estate and i keep these 2d and 3d views let's see if i can do this like this on the side so since this is our main workspace here we want to keep this uh, as big as possible. And sometimes I make this one a little bit bigger because some, some parameters sort of get clipped. 
So let's go through some uh, bootcamp uh, basics here in Substance Designer. So there's different types of nodes that we can use, and they have different bit depth. So there are color nodes, and those are identified by having uh, these yellow outputs and yellow lines. Uh, there's also one thing missing in here. If I just copy this and paste, there's the 16-bit color, and you see the 16-bit version of this uh, has a thicker line, and that's something to just look out for. Uh, and then there's grayscale versions of nodes, and you see the thin line is the 8-bit, indicated by this L8 here. And then you have L16, which is 16-bit, which is sort of what you want to use uh, for the most part. Uh, I never really use the 8-bit uh, output. And uh, here are some like examples of uh, undesirable things that can happen. So you have like this nice, smooth you know, purling noise here. And as an example, I set this node to sort of force it to 8-bit just to uh, see what can happen. So if we look at a normal map of, of this Perlin noise, it should look like this, really smooth and soft. But if, if, if this stuff happens where uh, something forces your graph to be 8-bit, you get this instead, which is not what you want. And here's another example. This is a common node that is 8-bit uh, by default, the uniform color. And here it's set to grayscale. Uh, if you put that into a blend node in the background slot, you see these different inputs here. It's going to force this node, it's going to inherit this L8 here. So it's going to create this, uh, it's going to create this normal map for you. And what you could do here then is to instead set these to 16 bit, and now you have a nice smooth uh, output. And here are some of the notes that sort of I use in my workflow that, you know, always forces these errors. So the, the quantize is a node that kind of creates this uh, stair-stepping, terracing effect. But you need, to, uh, you need to correct that after to set it back to 16-bit. And the color version of that, and then the standard uniform color which exists in color space and grayscale. So this is something that happens to everyone that starts out in Substance Designer. You you build your graph and you try to blend two things together and you get this. It's like, what is this? This is just an indication of a broken connection and the output just doesn't work. So what we're trying to do here is you're blending something of color with a grayscale value. You see the yellow and the gray here. And the result is a broken blend. And here's the opposite, the reverse, where you try to blend grayscale on top of uh, color. So that doesn't work either. So what you can do then is, if we have if we have that connection there, you can put the gradient map in between, which you see the input there is a grayscale and the output is a color. So that will fix that issue. And now our sort of multiplying of the color and the grayscale thing works. And you can go the other way here as well with the grayscale conversion if you actually want grayscale. So from color, grayscale conversion, you have some settings in here to, you know, manipulate that a bit. And something to look out for, a lot of these nodes that exists. For example, blur, you see blur HQ color and grayscale. So you see it has a red icon and it has a grayscale icon. So if you blend grayscale stuff, you want to use the grayscale. If you blend color, you want to use the color. You see these guys as well. And then this example here, I'm using the slow blur. This is the color version and this is the uh, grayscale version. And I think uh, that's it for that. Just look out for that because, you know, if you're starting to use the, the wrong one, you'll get a lot of these broken connections. And actually to... Uh, I might skip ahead 
a bit here you can you can fix this issue here by you know here we said we we should use this uh, gradient map to resolve the issue you can select this connection you just left click once and hit space to bring up the node search bar and hit gradient map gr and then you you fix that broken connection Uh, so over to tiling modes, essentially we're stepping through like the base parameters here. Uh, we have this shape node, it has tiling set to, you know, 7 or 8 or whatever. So it creates these little balls. And you see the tiling mode here is grayed out. It says H and V tiling, which is horizontal and vertical tiling. So it's a default setting. So everything always tile. Uh, if we go in here and set this to absolute, which is overriding the default, and set it to horizontal tiling, you will get this result. It will create seven of these spheres and it will just tile them uh, horizontally. And the opposite, obviously, with uh, vertical tiling mode. And then you have the mode called no tiling, which just creates the one item in the center essentially cropping out all the other ones from this example. This is uh, useful if you want to like sort of move something into a certain spot. And let's move over to output size. So we have this Perlin noise here. You see here it's set to 2048 by 2048, which is uh, what we have our, as our parent size over here. So it's inheriting the parent size. So if I go in and set the parent size to 1K, this node will be 1K. Let's set it back to 2K. And you can decouple these and have a, a rectangular shape texture. But what you can do when nodes can override these settings, so what I've done here with the save transform is that I actually want this to be a 2K by 4K. So what I've done here is uh, mess with the output size here, just scaling that up, setting this to, uh, to absolute as well. Or actually it's relative to the parent, so whatever the parent is. So you'll see now if I switch this to 1K, it will be a 1K by 2K. So it's using this number and it's doing a, a plus one on the height. You can do the opposite, you can do negative. And set this back to 2k. You can also, you know, force. So regardless of what I set, if I set this one to 4k, this one is still 256. If I set this to 512, this one is still 256. This is because this one is absolute, and I've set the resolution I want. So maybe I want 512. And here's an example of um, blending these two things together. So I have this uh, noise that's 512 because my parent is 512. And then I scale that up to a 2K by 4K. And then I blend it with this and now I get this result. It's because this node goes into the background. So uh, this node is using uh, the parent which is this setting, uh, and keeps that. But in this example, this is back to 2K here, even though this goes into background. It's because I set this to relative to parent, which inherits the graph. So if I go on this node, you know, if I hook that up there, it's 2K, but if I hook that up, it's 4K. Then I go in here and say relative to parent, and then I get whatever my parent size is here. Over to working with uh, nodes. Uh, we uh, have two nodes here combined. So we have a shape and we have a cloud. And we're blending them together using a subtract. You can if you left click and hold control and left click the other one, you can hit X to flip, flip the connection. Uh, pretty useful. I use it all the time. Uh, in this example here, we have the same 
thing and we want to connect it to this guy over here well we don't want to like start moving this over here so what you can do then is you go in here and you click on this output you left click once and then using the wheel on your mouse you hold and drag and you hook it up over here so imagine a graph sometimes you have a graph that's like you actually need to connect this to something up here much easier uh, deleting lines you can just left click it hit delete uh, in this example here same same notes again let's say we want to do uh, uh, we want to tile this a couple of times so we select the node left click hit space and do uh, save transform and we tile that I've seen some people they do like you know they create a blend node like down here and they connect this one and and they do something like it's much faster to just select the node hit blend or whatever you want to do and hook it up so in this example here we want to like grab this and connect it up here obviously you can just do that or you can like you know imagine these are maybe far apart let's drag these over here so instead of go flying over here and grabbing this and putting that there you can double click this to preview what the input is down near 2d view you can double click that so let's see uh, actually this one is the one we want so if you hold control click left click single click you can move that in here or if it's this guy we want you can hook that in there or if we're in the case where actually i don't want this to be up here at all you can hold shift and left click and drag and move it down here so those are pretty useful tools uh, if you have a big graph and you have a lot of clutter let's say you're going in and you're doing like you know I scale this down like this for whatever reason and then I have this other transform and that I do this it's like imagine like a big graph where you have tons of these you can start docking these and you can hit D on the keyboard and D so now we have those docked you can dock that one too and you can dock this one unless it's something you're reusing you can you can dock it it does hide some uh, some visibility when looking over your graph but for you know a transform node like this it's, it's sort of perfect some of these shapes and cloud noises and stuff like that you want to reuse so I don't recommend uh, docking those but transforms and you know small operations like that is good to dock and let's look at graph organizing obviously I've been using the uh, I've been using the comment which is a little comment that's attached to a node and the frame uh, sits around as a as a big group so how do we create those so you can just select a couple of nodes and hit space on the keyboard and type frame doesn't include uh, the comments apparently and if we want to comment you know let's say we want to remember that this is a uh, subtract or whatever you can do uh, right click and say add comment and say sub so now when you see this now you know it's subtract so and this one is actually parented to this so when you move this around it it stays put so I use this to describe like what certain specific things are doing and I use uh, the frame to explain the in a bigger context what the thing is doing but now I can move this as a group which is pretty cool 
Uh, let's look at this case here. Uh, we have some blends here. Uh, this this noise is reused twice, so we can hold Alt here on this wire and just click once. Now we got a little extra. They call it dot connection, I think. You can move that around to like you know make it go slim like that. You can add another one here, or you can connect both. You can connect it like so, and we can delete this guy. So now you have like a slimmer uh, version, and you can do the same here. Uh, whatever you want to do. And just drag the connection like so. So this is a good way of organizing. You can put extra dots in here to... Uh, just guide the flow to create a neater uh, graph. And here's a little bit messy. We put a little extra one in there, maybe. Suddenly we made this like way more readable for anyone who wants to uh, come in and look at this. Uh, I think that's the main thing working with nodes. Use I use the spacebar menu. You have you know in the library view that I disabled here. Uh, you have all the nodes you can drag and drop. But uh, I like just typing if I want to use a slow blur or whatever it is. Uh, since I have my personal nodes in a in a folder. Uh, let's see here if I can show my preferences. Uh, let's see, library. So I added my shared folder here under library. So th there I have my own custom nodes. I have my directional warp node here that I can easily find. So you can have a, your own little, uh, your own little custom library that you can find using this menu. Here I have most of my uh, notes. Uh, super useful. Uh, next we'll look at our outputs here and this is, uh, we can put our little explorer window in here. So you have created something super cool in substance. Uh, this is what I created. I created this, you know, I just use a level node to flatten this cloud, but I want to see that in here. We don't have any output, so we can't see it really. But we could do you know, view in 3D view and say view as base color, like that. But it doesn't really do it for us. We need, if we want to export these textures out, we need uh, outputs. So let's see how we can create some outputs. So we can create this base material node here. And we can say view in 3D view, like we did before. So now it's using all these settings, and you can view them here. But we still don't have any outputs, but what you can do is you select this node, say create output nodes uh, for hidden. Let's not do that. So here we have base color, uh, normal, roughness, metallic, AO, and height. And you can say right click on your graph, say view in 3D view. It doesn't change because these are just using these values here. Uh, let's change this just to make sure that this works. There, beautiful. And then you can uh, define input. So let's enable height here and we can connect our height we just made here. So now the height gets piped through this and it creates a normal. It has some settings in here for a normal strength, but you can, if you want to customize everything, you can say, I want to define my own normals, roughness, and base color. So let's say we do a gradient map on this just to create some color. I want to do, a, I want this to be red and this to be uh, blue. And this black color should be remapped to green. Perfect. And now we can hook that up in here. And sort of that's what that looks like. A normal. You can define that here yourself. 
Let's hook that up to here. And define your own strength to whatever you want. And roughness the same if you want to uh, use this one for roughness or if you want to make some custom. Beautiful little creation there. So that's how you work with outputs. Uh, now, once you have these, uh, the, the reason I can talk about that too, the reason these guys work is that they have this usage set up. So if you look at the base color here, I double click on it. It says usage base color, which is when you do the view outputs in 3D view, it looks at this usage and throws that into here because it knows this is the base color. It knows this is pipe to roughness. So if you create your own output, which you can do, it has no usage here, so you have to define this by one of these uh, preset uh, things you have in here. And uh, exporting your textures, you can go here. Uh, it's going to default to the folder where your stuff is. And then you can see here that the name it's going to use, it's going to use your dollar graph and dollar identifier so the the graph is the name of the graph which is outputs that we have up here and the identifier is the name of the actual node and you see these nodes here so if you make your own custom ones if i change this name to bootcamp here we'll say you know bootcamp normal blah 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 and then you can select which files you want to uh, export here. Here you can change the folder, here you can change the file type. And then you just hit export. And you can hit this uh, automatically export, but it's pretty annoying, especially for me, which has Dropbox enabled. It's going to, you know, every time I change the graph, it's going to re export. So the final thing here is uh, subgraphs. Oh yeah, uh, external resources. So you can work with uh, external bitmaps in Substance Designer. So all you need to do is you type bitmap. You will say from file. I will go to the folder and I will uh, get it here. And I just hit open, which I already did here. And now I can use you know my uh, imported file. Uh, beware for the bit depth. There's a couple of different options. You can uh, you can link or you can import the resource. I usually use link, which is uh, this file is linked to uh, a file on disk. If you uh, if you use the other option, let me actually debug what that is called. If we all oh, from new resource. Yeah. And the new resource will show up here and it will be part of your substance file. And this will be the file, the actual file on disk. And I like this version better. And the final thing we need to look at is here how to use uh, subgraphs. So sometimes there are certain operations that uh, we use a lot that we want to make into a little extra node. So uh, let's say we want to take this levels thing. We want to use that all the time. We create just a new uh, a new substance graph. And typically we just use the empty one. And here is an empty graph. And we can paste our little levels node here. And maybe we do some other operation here. Uh, you see my notes here, like it, using these uh, subgraphs or small extra helper utility nodes will reduce your graph clutter and it's useful to uh, cluster these uh, operations that you do very often. Uh, so if we do this, uh, we will create an input, grayscale. It's a grayscale operation. We run it through this and we create the ambient occlusion thing from that and then we blend that on top of itself using multiply. Then we create an output. 
Now we have a node that has an input and output. You input this, it's going to do the levels, it's going to do some AO on it, it's going to blend that on top, and it's going to send out the result. Obviously we can't see what the hell we're doing here, so maybe we just debug this in here to see. Okay, now we're doing that, and we're doing this. We blend those. Perfect. Okay, and now we hook it up back to the input. We save and go back to our outputs graph here. And we drag and drop our subgraph. And here we have the result. You can copy that node. We can run it on this thing and see what that does. And we can hook it up to uh, this or whatever. So that's how you use subgraphs. Just drag and drop, or uh, you know, save them as a separate file and put them in your uh, the library folder, your personal library folder, and you can find them using this uh, you know search menu.